Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys. The message reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? Currently, I am staying here in Harare, but I used to work there in South Africa. This was in the year 2012. That was when this whole mess happened to me. But I am back home and I'm waiting for the day that I am supposed to die. Yes, there is going to be a day that I am going to die because of the rituals that I performed. At that time, when I went to South Africa, my husband, he had already been there. He went to South Africa. It was in 2009, just before Christmas. That was when he had went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, unfortunately, my husband was then involved with a lot of criminal elements because my husband here in Zim, he used to do this diamond buying as well as digging up for the diamonds. And at that time, when he was working at the Chiazwa mines at that area, the syndicate that he was working with, they were accused of killing people you know there was this other story where they said that there were people there in Chiazwa that were moving around and what they will do is that when they find you digging up for diamonds and if they ask you if you have any diamonds at that time the people that were digging up for the diamonds after finding a diamond then the person will swallow that diamonds there was this other story that they found this man he had been murdered after this man had been murdered they opened up his stomach and they removed his intestines one by one they started opening the intestines until they had found the diamonds that he had swallowed unfortunately my brother my own husband he was involved with that syndicate that used to go around holding those long knives as they'll be terrorizing the diamond miners my husband he would frequently return back home with a lot of blood he used to wear these other very long jackets so that they can cover the weapons because they used to tie those weapons around their waist and each and every night when my husband will return back home he would be having a lot of blood all over his shoes as well as his coat whenever i would wash the blood my little sister will tell me that but this thing that you are doing of washing this blood without telling anyone maybe in the future this thing it is going to affect you in our culture the spirit of a person that has been murdered when that spirit comes back for revenge we call it ngozi the avenging spirit so my little sister said you need to tell our parents about this issue but i didn't want to tell my parents because my brother of my situation and my parents status my father was a pastor when he was still alive so i am a pastor's daughter so i didn't want to tell my father that this was what my husband was doing my father thought that my husband was just an entrepreneur because what they will do is that they will travel all the way to mutare and go to that place in chiazwa where there were the diamond mines then they will rob people of their diamond and then they will return back to harare there were always these white men that were always at our house and they used to have these cars that had the gp number plates they would buy the diamonds and return with the diamonds to south africa that is how i ended up in south africa because of the connections that my husband had with a lot of people that would come to zim from south africa to purchase these diamonds during those years brother nashi there was this other time when my husband my husband and his syndicate they followed this other man who was south african after they had followed this man who was a south african he had a lot of money and they lied to him that the diamonds this guy when they told him that they were supposed to meet with him in this other area in harare they told him that the diamonds were at our place they came with him i saw that man he was speaking zulu but at that time i thought that it was just in Debele because it was the first time hearing someone speak zulu so when they spoke with him they told him about the diamonds they showed him the diamonds but what they will do is that 
instead of giving you the diamonds they will swap the diamonds with this other rock that is called so what they will do is that they would swap the diamonds and the emeralds with this other rock that is called tourmaline it really looks like an emerald or like a diamond so when that guy had given them the money he then found out that these guys had actually given him that tourmaline that looks like emeralds he came back and he was complaining that was when they took him they said that let us go straight to the mines so that we can give you more and we are going to give you a little bit of more diamonds then when you return back from south africa you can give us the money so that guy he then went with them to chiatwa well at least he was there then there was a murder and i think that when this murder happened my husband knew everything that was happening because there were always police that kept on coming at our house the cid most of this cid they used to come like they were undercover and they would ask me where my husband was at then my husband ran away when my husband ran away he came to south africa already my husband was connected to a lot of criminal gangs when he came to south africa he kept on doing the same thing that he was doing since he was very experienced with these things of diamonds gold and stuff like that so there was a gang that he was working for what they will do is that they would pretend as if they have a lot of diamonds or gold when you come and meet up with them then the guns will come out unfortunately my husband was then arrested my husband was in prison he was then murdered because it seemed as if he wanted to expose the leader of the gang my husband died in a prison there in south africa he was murdered and everyone knew that my husband had been a victim of gang violence before my husband had died he had tried several times to ask the lawyer to go and speak with the judge so that he can be removed from the prison where he was at because he said that he kept on receiving this threats and the gang wanted him to tell the judge that it was him who had planned everything but he was just hired simply because he knew the gold and the diamonds so they wanted to pin the rest of the crime that happened on him so he saw that if he was going to agree that he was the one who planned everything then he was going to be in prison for the rest of his life when he tried to confess to give his true confession unfortunately my husband was then murdered in prison when my husband died i was already in south africa and when my husband passed away we were staying in this secure neighborhood in that town that we were staying and the house that we were renting me and my husband each and every month the rentals that we used to pay one could actually buy a car a used car each and every month when my husband passed away i didn't want to let go of that life because all my life i had never worked so i could not picture myself going and working as a maid i said let me try to sustain this life i had a little bit of savings that i had i started using those savings and i tried just a small business i tried a small business of buying and selling i would go and i would purchase clothes then i would resell them back here in zim but the business was not picking up remember that my husband used to make maybe even 30k a day whenever they would sell these diamonds so now i was waiting for the clothes to arrive then shipping them to zim so this was like taking a very long time the first month i default i defaulted on the rent then the second then the third the guy said that i had to move out and when he said that i had to move out i said let me try something else already there was this other traditional healer there in chipinge this traditional healer he used to help my husband since my husband and his syndicate they used to go around robbing a lot of people and even killing people so they used these charms these charms that they were using so that the police cannot catch them even when they were passing through roadblocks the if they were police dogs could not sniff anything on them they were using those charms even some charms he said that he was once given some charms whereby if someone shoots him then the bullet will not penetrate his 
Kin. I do not know if it was true or what, but this is what he told me. He said he said that he had been placed in this boiling pot, and when he was placed in that boiling pot, he was then strengthened so that even a bullet cannot penetrate his skin. So I knew where this traditional healer was at because the traditional healer was assisting a lot of robbers as well as people that go around hijacking vehicles going with them to Mozambique. My brother, when I returned back to Zim, I was holding the last money that we had in our saving accounts and it was 80,000 rands. I then went and I spoke with that healer and I said that this is all that I have and I do not want to be poor because I do not know poverty and i do not want to disappoint my father already my father was disappointed when he heard that his son-in-law was arrested in south africa and when he was murdered in prison there in south africa he was even more disappointed i wanted to show my father that i was not a failure i wanted to show him that I could actually become something. I could actually become someone and do something with my life. Brother Nashi, I spoke with that traditional healer. And he then said that from the money that I had, he wanted a cut. And after that, I was supposed to give him the rest of the money. He was not going to use it, but he was actually going to keep it in this holy mountain so that it can be blessed by the ancestors. I left Brother Nashi and I returned back to South Africa. When I returned back to South Africa, he then called me. This was after a couple of months. Mind you, at that time, life was just too difficult for me. All my stuff, I had finished it off selling them. We had a lot of expensive furniture because we used to go even to Italy to buy some furniture. I started selling off the furniture, paying the rent, paying the rent. When that man finally called me, he said that it was an emergency. He had found a plan for me. I then returned back to him and he gave me back the remaining 40K and he said that this money of yours, I have tried to take it to the mountain so that the ancestors can bless it but when i returned back to the mountain i have found that the ancestors did not give you any extra money so this is your money i said so what am i going to do 40k is not enough for me i need a million at least a million will be better i need something please give me something he then said if you are willing i know someone who will be willing to buy your womb brother nashi when he said that i know someone who can buy your womb i looked at myself and i said but i have already given birth to two of my kids so what is the purpose of me having this womb i do not want to be poor i have never been poor in my life and i do not want to place a heavy burden on my father to return back to his house so that he can start taking care of me i want to stand on my own i then said how much is he going to buy this i then said how much is he going to give me for my womb then that man said that the womb as for your womb he is the one who is going to tell you after speaking with these gods then the gods will tell you how much they will be willing to pay you for your own womb brother nashi i was then taken to this other traditional healer we spoke for a very long time and unfortunately i had to i had to do some terrible stuff with that man this man he then said that he had to taste me as in sleeping with me and when he had slept with me he was going to tell me how much he was going to give me for my own womb i slept with that man not only once i stayed with him because at his homestead women that come to him so that they can sell their wombs to him you have to sleep with him this man brother nashi when he sleeps with you you think that sleeping with a man is easy it is not easy a woman when a woman gives birth to a big baby there is this condition whereby inside your private parts you can have a lot of damaged skin that is what was happening to me whenever i would make love to that traditional healer his manhood was oversized and it was really painful i could actually bleed when he would be making love to me 
and he would not stop making love to me because at that point you were possessed by a spirit when you would scream in pain he would not even hear you because he said that this spirit that will come and possess him the man he died and he was deaf so he could not hear anything so no matter how hard you would scream the man will not hear anything because he was possessed by that spirit of a man who died when he was deaf so this man he slept with me until he said that he now knew how much he was supposed to give me it was so much painful each and every morning brother nashi after this man would have slept with me throughout the night some women that worked for this man they would bring this small metallic dish that was full of herbs then i would remove my clothes and my underwear then i would just sit in that dish so that to soak my private parts so that i can feel much better because on that same night the men who want to sleep with me again so they wanted me to feel a little bit better brother nashi whenever someone asks for money from me i feel so much anger in my heart because i know that the process that i did when i was selling my womb it was not an easy thing i have seen a lot of women that they say that they are willing to sell their wombs they do not know what they are asking for if you think that childbirth is very painful picture feeling that pain 10 times even 20 times more that is how much painful it was at that time when that man was sleeping with me this was just the first step the next step was that they had to remove this womb of mine physically and there was no pill that pill that can make you feel less pain what they did brother nash on that night when they were supposed to remove the womb from my body physically and spiritually at the same time the man was possessed i was then taken to this other room when i was placed inside that room i was sleeping on this other red cloth that i was sleeping on then there were two women that came these two women one was holding my left leg one was holding my right leg and I, I had my legs wide open as if i was about to give birth then the traditional healer he was kneeling before me looking at my private parts then there was another man who was holding both of my hands together so that i cannot run away because they said that this was going to be very painful the only thing that they gave me one of the women came and gave me a root it was a bitter root to taste he said that whenever you feel pain bite it as hard as you can at that time i thought that since i had given birth this pain i already knew the pain but the pain that i felt brother nashi as they were removing my womb you know your body there is this other threshold of pain whereby your body cannot take it anymore i would faint when they were removing my womb then after i would have fainted then i would feel a tingling sensation on my private parts when i would wake up the pain will just flood that feeling of pain would flood my body then i'll faint again finally when they had removed my womb i then felt empty i felt so empty like there was something that was missing in my stomach area when i woke up i was really weak because of the frequent fainting and regain because of the way that i was losing conscious and then regaining my consciousness so i felt so weak when i woke up i saw that the traditional healer was holding this other thing that looked more like a bag of flesh but it was a bag of thin flesh that he was holding and inside there was a lot of eggs i think thousands or more of eggs that i could actually see they were quite small but white in color then that traditional healer kept on speaking with his ancestors after that i saw that that womb of mine just disappeared i actually felt so much emptiness at that time that was when the traditional healer told me that it was done i asked him how much how much he said you are too weak 
I will tell you tomorrow. Now you can rest. The next morning, the traditional healer, he came and they gave me some herbs to drink. They cooked porridge. The porridge was made of herbs and I ate and I regained my strength. Even when I woke up, I could actually feel that one part of my body was missing. My womb was missing. Then that Hila gave me money. He just came with a plastic bag full of US dollars. He said, this is your money. This is your money. Now go and spend your money. I said, what can I use this money for? He said, this money cannot be given to your relatives. This money, if you want, it can only be given to any poor person, but you are not supposed to be related. You are not supposed to know where this person comes from. And if you do not know that person, and if that person who is a stranger to you is poor, then you are allowed to give that person as much money as you want. Brother Nashi, this is my own confession. The money that I have, it is a lot of money. Each and every day, I know that my days are numbered on this earth, so I enjoy life. I live with no regrets. The only challenge is that having intercourse, having sex, it is very different when you do not have a womb. The feeling, the feeling, you just feel empty. I have tried to go for this treatment that they call vaginal tightening but it does not get that tight like it gets tight when you have a womb your dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me she was saying that she is a pastor's daughter and i said why didn't you pray about your situation she said i tried to pray then i remembered that there is the dark side that can give me a quick response because we all know that God's answer will take forever. I wanted a quick answer, then I went to the dark side.